Now, we are going to go to a Bible book now. And uh, hopefully, if God permits us, we will complete that whole book of the Bible. This book about the Bible is exactly about what we have learned during the Rosary. It tells of a family which was earlier with the Lord, was in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, the city of the Lord. But some problems here and there took place, so they left Bethlehem. They left the place of the Lord. And where they went? Foreign country. Foreign. As we also feel sometimes. Foreign country if we go. So they went foreign. And when they went foreign, for some time they had a good time. Prosperity, etc. But ultimately, complete famine came. Then what they think about? What I told you, they think about the first husband. That's what we learned. So they decide, let us go back. But in the meantime, they have, their mistake has cost them a lot of loss. And they've lost so many things. How is it restored to them once they come back to the Lord? In fact, it is in a story form. But exactly teaching you what you have learned from the beginning of this session through the rosary. How the Lord restores us. Okay? I'm talking about the book of Ruth. The books of the Bible, as you know, are carefully arranged. For your information, the first five books of the Bible, what we call the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Genesis, the beginning. Refers to the father. Exodus, second book. They leave Egypt, the land of sin, and go over to Cana. That refers to the son, because by the sacrificing of the son, we can leave our sinful life. In fact, in Exodus, you have the cutting of the lamb there. Genesis points to the father. Second book of the Bible, Exodus points to the son. Third book of the Bible, Leviticus points to the Holy Spirit because Leviticus will tell you how to worship. Having taught you all these things, then comes a period you have to decide. On whose side are you? Are you going to be on the side of the world or the side of God? Therefore you have the fourth book, the book of Numbers. You are numbered, which side you are. And then thereafter, all the commands that God has given, becomes part of your life, internalized by you. That's the book of Deuteronomy. It became their way of life, whatever the Lord said. Everything is in order. The Holy Spirit has put all the books of the Bible in order. Now, these five books are called the Pentateuch. After the Pentateuch come the second set of books, the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is a book in which God leads them and he tells them, okay, now this is your inheritance, this part of the land. This part of the land is yours. This part of the land is yours. Enjoy yourselves now. Book of Joshua. Then comes the book of Judges. So they settle in those lands, but they follow various leaders. Some leaders are good, some leaders not good. No? But they don't want to follow any, they want to do basically as they want. So, in Konkani, Trasan Bhatta. When they want to do what they want to do, Trasan Bhatta. They don't have one king. The Lord is not their king. You understand, no? The Lord is not their king. We cannot proceed unless we make the Lord the king of our heart. So lovely is that song we sing at Adoration Time. Jesus... Come and take your place on my heart. You are the king of my life. So in Joshua, again I'm saying, placements are made. This is your land, this is your land, this is your land. God helps them to defeat all the enemies. In Judges, they fall into the mistake. What is the mistake? They start doing as they want. There is no one king. No one king. They don't have a king. No? And then comes the book of Ruth. 
So now uh, Joshua again. Hello, Joshua again deals with what? Defeating our enemies and and getting our place in the promised land. That is the work of God the Father. See, God the Father a lot. Okay, come on, my son. Enjoy your life now. Come on, my daughter. Enjoy your life. Joshua points to the Father. Whereas the book of Judges, again, when people start doing whatever they want, they don't have a single king. It refers to the son. Can you see the last line of the book of Judges? There was no king in Israel at that time. Everyone did just as he pleased. No king. Jesus was not the king. The book of Judges therefore points out to Jesus who was not yet the king of people's lives. Who was not yet the king of people's life. I said to you and I say again, if the book of Joshua points to the Father, if the book of Judges which is next points to Jesus who is not the king, not been made the king, then naturally the book of Ruth will point to the work of the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit does is he brings you back to make him the real king. So have you got it? Just before the book of Ruth, the situation is there is no king. This line which you find at the end of the book of Judges, there was no king in Israel at that time. Everyone did just as he pleased, as repeated in the book of Judges. Twice it is there. See? So when God has allowed that sentence twice, it means that period of Judges was a period where Jesus Christ was not the king. God was not the king. They survived. They did whatever they wanted. Look at Judges chapter 17 and verse number 6. There was no king in Israel. Everyone did just as he pleased. So one you find in the middle of the book. The other you find at the end of the book. Why I'm telling you this background? Because you know now Ruth, which is the next book, is going to correct this. Is going to make the Lord the real king of our lives. The Lord the real bridegroom. Now come on, let's go to the book of Ruth. Chapter 1. Long ago, in the days before Israel had a king, there was a famine in the land. So a man named Elimelech, who belonged to the clan of Ephrath, and who lived in Bethlehem in Judea. See where he lived, huh? He lived in Bethlehem. See what he did. He went with his wife Naomi and their two sons Mahalon and Chilion to live for a while in the country of Moab. So they shifted out of the land of the Lord. What does it mean to you? Little trouble came. They said, okay, let us go elsewhere. Let us move out from the Lord and give importance to other things. Right? They did this for a while. Means that just like all of us, no, we will come back. But, uh, finally, we get involved there and remain there and away from the Lord. So in the beginning, he went to live for a while in the country of this thing. You know, how you'll have to do this Bible study is, you know what? Certain verses, we are not going to read all verses. Certain verses, uh, you need to just mention it in your notebook. And very fast, write some meaning. Then you can meditate later. Books of the Bible, you must meditate after. That's why I told you all, during your free time, don't chat too much. If you really want to understand the book. No? So for the moment, just write the verse. And so they, for a while, they went to live in the country of Moab. While they were living there, Elimelech died. Naomi was left alone with her two sons, who married Moabite girls. Orpa and Ruth. Ten years later, Malon and Chilion also died. Naomi was left all alone without husbands or sons. Tragedy. If you notice that all the men folk, all the husbands were taken away. Because the real bridegroom was not there. No, they left the real bridegroom. So see how it's reflecting in their life. First the old man dies, after the old man only 10 years the son survive after marriage and they also die. What a thing, no? 10 years of marriage only. 
সংস্থার চৌপা মেরঙ্ক না সংসার কাবার যাতল ব্রাদার সংসার তেমনি ফকত দা ওয়ার্স সংসার চাইল ওকে দে ওয়ার লেফট অল অলোন উইদাউট হাজবেন্ড সন ক্যান ইউ সি দা ওয়ার্ড অল অলোন দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াট হ্যাপেন্স হোয়েন ইউ লিভ ইয়ার রিয়েল ব্রাইট গ্রুম ইউ থিঙ্ক দ্যাট আদার থিংস উইল সলভ ইউ গো দে ইউ হ্যাভ ফর সাম টাইম আ গুড টাইম বাট দেন ট্র্যাজেডি স্যাডনেস মিজারি নো অ্যান্ড ইউর সিকিউরিটি ইজ গন সি দে ফিলিং অল অলোন some time later naomi heard that the lord had blessed his people by giving them a good harvest so she got ready to leave moab with her daughters in law they started together to go back to juda so now finally sense is coming let's go back to the lord let's go back to the land of the lord this is wisdom and what i told you during the rosary the lord says once you come back don't be afraid i will restore you you are unfaithful earlier but now you have come back to make me a real bridegroom can you see the word in verse number 6 she heard so this is how faith comes by hearing the good things that the lord has done the prodigal son also said here i'm suffering whereas i know in my father's house even servants have better to eat so he started back this is what happens you may have lord of wealth this that that no like incidentally just coincidentally one of our prayer group members who is in uh, uk was speaking to me just two days back and telling me we have wealth a brother here job which produces money but our faith is really gone it's difficult to keep the faith and brother i almost feel that we should leave and come back i said that's the problem with you you almost feel only you feel no don't almost feel you feel <laughs> where your real treasure is he said star ke uh, really we are absolutely out of godly company and when we came here we had made it our intention that we will go for mass we will pray we will search for a prayer meeting we are doing this for other 8 9 months now so many years now so many are busy with this busy with that busy with this busy with that and so we think sometimes of our days in goa i didn't tell him but i'm telling you this is what happened to that fellow who is he elimelech let's go leave the lord's land leaving the lord's land means leaving the real bride groom let's go something else will chasing after her lovers as the book of hosea said she left me and chased after her lovers did they give any satisfaction they gave a nice house they gave this that and in the long run what has happened to the generation finished the generation has been finished has become a faithless generation no So now all the sons are dead all the male people are dead only three females remain but thanks be to god she hears so she comes back and she brings her daughter in laws verse number 7 they started out together to go back to juda on the way she said to them go back home and stay with your mothers may the lord be as good to you as he has been to you and those who have died may the lord make it possible for each of you to marry again and have a home so now she has started with three of them have coming young daughter in laws and the old mother in law in the middle the old mother in law says bye you all go back to your houses mother's house maybe you all can get married there no so even when coming back to the lord no there will be many people who will discourage you like this see this is to learn the mother in law is actually discouraging them or oh, i don't know whether discouraging them or putting them to the test because later you will read one daughter in law said no 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 we will not leave but after some time after pressing them again and go man go man one daughter in law said okay 
I'll go. But the other daughter-in-law whose name was Ruth said, no, I'm not going to leave you. Did not change her mind. Therefore, she was the one who reached the land of the Lord, Bethlehem again. So there will be many who like this, when you make up your mind to strengthen the mystical relationship with the Lord, give him the focus of your life, oh, many temptations will come like this. And they started out together, go to back to Judah, verse number 8. She said to them, go back home and stay with your mothers. May the Lord be as good. And see, she's using the word Lord. Huh? So some people are there, they use the word Lord, but they do everything, whatever the Lord doesn't want them to do. May the Lord be as good as you have been to me and those who have died. May the Lord make it possible for each of you to marry again. Naomi kissed them goodbye, but they started crying and said to her, No, we will go with you to your people. Verse number 11, second attempt. You must go back, my daughters, Naomi answered. Why do you want to come with me? Do you think I could have sons again for you to marry? Go back home. I'm too old to get married again. Even if I thought there was still hope and I got married tonight and had sons, will you wait until they grow up? Would this keep you from marrying someone else? No, my daughters. You know that's impossible. The Lord has turned against me. I feel very sorry for you. So the same lady, see the last thing she says, earlier you saw she said, may the Lord bless you, may you do this. And last sentence which I just read, the Lord has turned against me. Are you did it and what Lord will turn? You are the one who left and chased after other lovers. Then what do you expect? So her attitude towards the Lord is shown. But more than that, she's convincing them it is impossible that any change will come. See how she puts in her mind. Are you going to wait even if I have two babies another one week? Are you going to wait until they grow up and then marry them? And there's no chance for me also to get married. <laughs> so anyone listening to these arguments, hello, a lot of logical arguments will be given to you by lots of people. Huh? Don't listen to them. Listen to the voice of God, the voice of the Spirit. Not the voice of reasonableness. What is reasonable? That's what the people of the world go by reason. We go by the voice of the Lord. Verse number 14. Again they started crying. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back home. But Ruth held on to her. Naomi said to her, Ruth, your sister-in-law has gone back to your people and to her God. Go back home with her, no? But Ruth answered, don't ask me to leave you. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Look at the difference. Actually, both don't want to go at the beginning. But Master for Skelet, one person says, okay. This is what happens to us also, no? When someone, we go to someone's house, huh? and we are given something to eat or food is served. No, no, no. I've eaten, I'm really full. Really, I cannot manage. Food has reached here my throat. No, no, no. Gary, to Sanayana, Gary, every, every, every. Okay, to please you only, I'm having. Gary, no? Last time. So some people are like that. Even in spiritual, this thing. First, they'll say, no, we will never leave the Lord. Never, never. But inside the thing, the worm is inside. So with a little more force than our apartment, she said, okay, I'm going back. Going back where? where? To her mother's house, which is not Bethlehem. So she's gone back. Nothing is heard about Arpa after that. Because all those who choose not to come to the Lord as their bridegroom, there is no, tra no trace of them after that. But Ruth determined. Even hundred times you tell me, I will not leave the Lord. See the difference. Hmm? And see how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Verse number 17. Wherever you die, I will die, and that is where I'll be buried. May the Lord's worst punishment come upon me, if I let anything but that separate me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So, 
when you are determined, you will see after some time, all these attempts to separate you from Christ will stop. Especially when you're a newcomer or you're growing through the detergent stage and the illumination stage, all these discouragements will come. Trials at home, this thing, that thing, that thing, that thing. You can't understand what is happening. Some prayers not answered. So you feel like leaving. But when you're determined to hold on, see what it said, verse number 18. When she saw that she's not going to leave, she stopped. And so it is in our life. The devil stops. Says, okay, whatever I do, this child is not going to move from Christ. They went on until they came to Bethlehem. Ah, they've reached the right place now, 19. When they arrived, the whole town got excited. The women, they exclaimed, is this really Naomi? Verse number 20. Don't call me Naomi, she answered. Call me Mara. Because Almighty God has made my life bitter. When I left here, I had plenty. But the Lord has brought me back without a thing. Why call me Naomi when the Lord Almighty has condemned me, sent me trouble? So what do you learn from her? She says the right things. Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty. But what are her feelings towards the Lord Almighty? Bitter and angry. How can she have a relationship with you? You understood? No, many of us are like that. We say, Lord Almighty, we praise you. We love you. We will cry also before you. But we are bitter and angry with the Lord. Why didn't you give me a child? Why didn't you bring a suitable marriage partner? Because of you, my child did not get a job. I had to go here and there. No, they will not talk to anyone, but inside the bitterness. You see, she says also, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. And she sees, she says, you had plenty. I had plenty and now the Lord has brought me without it. My question is, if you had plenty here, why did you leave? Why did you leave from here? Why did you leave the Lord's presence if you had plenty here? Means you are not satisfied. And this is the problem with us also. We are not satisfied. We want more and more and more. And that leads us into error. This then, verse number 22, was how Naomi came back from Moab with Ruth, a Moabite daughter-in-law. The barley harvest was just beginning when they arrived in Bethlehem. Now, in chapter 2, you'll have an interesting thing happening. One very rich man by the name of Boaz. And ultimately, by the end of the book of Ruth, you'll see Ruth marrying Boaz. Boaz is therefore a symbol of whom? No one else but Jesus Christ. Your bridegroom and my bridegroom. She doesn't know Boaz at that time. We also don't know Jesus Christ at that time. But we have decided to come back at least to him. To live for him. And then you see how little by little Boaz helps her. Though she does not even know that he's helping her. He helps her. Okay, chapter 2. Naomi had a relative named Boaz. A rich and influential man who belonged to the family of her husband, Elimelech. One day, Ruth said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields to gather the corn that the harvest workers have. I'm sure to find someone who let me work with him. Naomi answered, Go ahead, my daughter. Verse number 3. Ruth went out to the fields. She walked behind the workers, picking up the corn which they left. It so happened she was in a field that belonged to Boaz. So now she's picking up. The workers are working there. Whatever while they're carrying is falling. She's virtually like a beggar. She's picking up that. No? And she wants to take that home. Picking up the corn with the left. It so happened. Look at the word. It so happened that she was in a field. Actually, nothing happens by coincidence. When you come back to the Lord, he will create situations where you come to him. See, there's no question of it so happened. It so happened I came for that prayer meeting or that friend told me, come to the crusaders. And nothing happens as coincidence. No? Jesus was directing it. Sometime later, verse number four. 
Boaz himself arrived from Bethlehem. He greeted the workers. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, they answered. See, see the close relationship with the workers and the master. Boaz asked the man in charge, who is that young woman? See, who notices whom first? Boaz notices her. No? It is the Lord who recognizes. He takes notice first of what we do. Who is that woman? Said. The man answered, she is the foreign girl who came from Moab with Naomi. She asked me to let her follow the workers and pick up the corn. She has been working since early morning. Just now she stopped to rest for a while under the shelter. Then Boaz said to Ruth, let me give you some advice. He's talking directly out to her. Don't pick up the corn anywhere except in this field. He's giving an advice. Huh? In other words, he's saying earlier, your great father-in-law left and strayed away. Now you don't do the same thing. You remain here with me. Don't look at other fields. Only here you come. Hmm? This is deep meaning, you know. If you just read it as a novel, you cannot understand this. But if you read it with the background of what we did when saying the rosary, see, everything makes sense. Huh? Don't pick up corn anyway except in this field. Work with the woman here. Which means what? Find fellowship with those who are working for me. Find fellowship with those who work with them. See? Work with them. Work with those who are already mine. Work with them. Watch them to watch them to see where they are reaping. Stay with them. See? This aspect stresses the aspect of fellowship. Don't leave the fellowship. See that you find your fellowship among those who know me. See how they work. Learn how to work from them. No? I have ordered my men not to molest you. In other words, don't be afraid. No harm will come to you. I have already given a command that no one shall harm you. Whenever you are thirsty, go and drink water from the water jars. They are filled. Ruth bowed down with her face, touching the ground, and said to Boaz, Why should you be so concerned about me? Why should you be so kind to a foreigner? What has happened so far? Let us list it. Number one, she was picking up grain which had fallen from the workers as they are working. Boaz comes and he first notices her. He calls her, see? It is always my Jesus who notices me. He, he asks the workers, Boaz asks, who is that? Having come to know who he is, he calls her and then he gives her advice. No? The first thing is, you need to listen to the advice God gives through the Bible, because that's the voice of your bridegroom. You need to listen. So you're called. He called her, number one. Number two, he advised her. Number three, he told her, join in the fellowship of the other workers, my workers. Learn from them how to work. Stay with them. See the instructions given very clearly. Stay with them. These three, work with my workers, stay with them, learn from them how to work. All these pertain to the fellowship aspect. My people learn from them, from my people. And then what more? Protection for you. More than any protection that Bajaj Alliance or any other insurance company can give you, I'm giving you. No one will touch you. That's not the end. Hello, whenever you are thirsty, you know what you do? Drink from the water jars that have been filled. The water jars are kept for his people. But you go. Though you are not yet my per person, go and fill. Huh? Get refreshed with my Holy Spirit. And she's struck, you know. She says, why should you be so kind and concerned? Because normally with workers, they are not like that. 
very harsh with workers correct they are as harsh as the law if you see the law also is very harsh but now the law is become very kind that's why in verse number 10 it is there that sentence see 10 is the significance of the law instead she should have said because it is the law why are you so cruel and so rigid and so strict but you see why you should be so concerned because jesus brought grace he did not come with the law the law was given through moses but jesus came with the law plus love with grace he showed i'm concerned about you he showed his love for us he did not just show that you should obey and then only you'll get no i'm there for you therefore in verse number 10 see which always signifies the 10 commandments you find a strange thing why is so kind and jesus gave life to the law he showed what grace does now verse number 11 boaz answered i have heard about everything you have done for your mother in law since your husband died i know how you left your father and mother your own country how you came to live among a people you had never known see what was boaz's answer i know everything about you i have heard i know see the words there which you can underline I have heard. I know. Actually, the language that the Lord used with Moses. I have heard the groaning of my people in Egypt. I know what. A, so you may think the Lord does not know; He knows it. We may think Jesus does not know the latest position. Ah, re, He knows everything, man. <laughs> he knows everything. No. So to a question. Why are you so kind? I know everything about you. No, that's the reason I'm so concerned about you. Verse number twelve: May the Lord reward you for what you have done. May you have a full reward from the Lord, God of Israel, to whom you have come for protection. Verse number thirteen: Ruth answered, "You are very kind to me, sir. You have made me feel better by speaking gently to me." even though i'm not the equal of one of your servants these are all the qualities of jesus guys okay how he humbles himself see even by the way he, he talks later you will learn in revelation also no you will learn how he talks to you even when you make mistakes no i my experience has been even when i make a mistake he'll never scold but he will ask in this form is that the right thing to do admon did you do the right thing the deep in the conscience and deep in the soul now you can feel it see not the usual voices that we hear why you did this why you did that is this the right thing has it made you happy didn't you do what you wanted to do and has it made you happy can't you talking like that no the all qualities of jesus very kind he makes us feel better by speaking gently that is providing we listen to his word no though we are not the, he is equal he treats us like he is equal verse number 14 at meal time was said to ruth come and have a piece of bread and dip it in the sauce so she sat with the workers and boaz passed her some roasted grain she ate until she was satisfied she still had some food left over Wow! Look at that, man. And which verse? Verse number fourteen, which is seven into two. Now is a direct reference to Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity. And you can see the Last Supper being reenacted. Come, have a piece of bread. Dip it in the sauce. And she sat with the workers. She's not supposed to sit. She's not even a worker. You don't deserve it. but even at the mass he says come to you see he's invitation you come now don't be afraid come have a piece of bread dip it in the sauce and it shows that he passed some roasted grain he personally see feeding so he's provider earlier we saw his protector he told no one should molest her he's the supplier earlier we saw whenever you thirsty go and drink freely 
Jesus is everything. Why the hell did they leave that place and go elsewhere? No wonder they suffered so much of loss. Now here, with the Lord, see, the goodness of the Lord they experience. She ate until she was satisfied. What a long sentence that is. Sentence number 14. It says, he called her, come. He said, eat. He passed the grain to her. She ate and she was satisfied. And number five, she had spare food. Five aspects included in that one line, line number 14, which points to Jesus. See how considerate he is. Now we are losing count of what, what he has done. In the beginning you saw, he noticed her. And he asked about her and then he called her and gave her advice. Then he said, don't go anywhere, remain in this field. Don't do the mistake that the others have done before you. And don't worry. Stay with my people who know me. Work with them. I told you the fellowship aspect. No one will harm you. Protect the aspect. When you're thirsty, drink. He didn't speak about food. But when food time came, she must have drunk water and said, now I have to worry about food. See, we do it. We worry. This is provided, but tomorrow will he provide? See? He has already thought about it. Come, sit. Take heat. He passed it, the roasted grains. Passed it. And then she ate and was satisfied. She had more than enough. She must have made a parcel of it. To take to her mother-in-law. And this you know. The goodness of Jesus. And he says all this through a kind voice, see, which uplifts her. Wow, you and I are just beginning to understand this right group. Verse number 15. After she had left to go on picking up corn, Boaz ordered the workers. Now she's eaten and gone. Boaz ordered his workers. Let her pick it up even where the bundles are lying. Don't say anything to stop her. Beside that, pull out some corn from the bundles and leave it for her to pick up. See, man, he's making her task easier. He's telling her workers in private. Huh? Even if she goes to the bundles and takes, don't say anything. Let her take. And in addition, she's picking up, following you all and picking up, no? Purposely throw some more there so that she can get it. Can you see? See how he provides for us. So Ruth went on gathering corn in the field until evening. And when she had beaten it out, she found she had nearly 10 kgs. My God, what she would have got on her own? Collecting those leftovers, how much she would have got? But when she found her true bridegroom, see 10 kgs, which is again significant of the law. She had fulfilled the law. She could even obey him. Understand now. Verse number 18. She took the corn back into the town and showed her mother-in-law how much she had gathered. She also gave her the food left over from the meal. See, I told you. See, she starts thinking about her mother-in-law. You will see, now ever since Ruth has come in contact with Boaz, who is a symbol of Jesus, her own nature starts changing. She, she start, she's eating here, but she's thinking of mother-in-law. She made a parcel of the extra food for mother-in-law. When she comes home, she doesn't have to tell her mother-in-law what happened, but she reports faithfully. See, many co-members don't have the habit of reporting faithfully. They will do something quietly or they will decide on their own and do. Accountability. See, the Lord said, I can do nothing without my father telling me to do. I can do nothing without my father. The close relationship between Jesus and the father. He says, I have seen what my father has done. So I can. It is not me who is speaking, it's the father speaking. How is this possible unless there is a close link of accountability and reporting? As we succeed in our ministries, in other work and all that, no? Slowly certain things we don't report. We are not accountable. We think that, why, this is a small thing, why should I report? No? Not so in the nature of Jesus. And now not so in the nature of Ruth. 
Ruth comes back and gives her a truthful report of what happened. No? And she also gives her the food, which means she is getting also selfless. Ever since she has met Boaz. Naomi asked her, where did you gather all this? Whose field you have been working in? May God bless the man who took an interest in you. So Naomi says all the right things. Huh? The change, see, change is coming in Naomi also. It's like a chain. Ever since Ruth met Boaz, just now you saw how her nature started changing. Now, now uh, Ruth comes in contact with Naomi. You know who was very bitter? The Lord has this, done this, Lord has done that. See her, see she's changing now. She said, where did you gather this? Whose field have been working? May God bless the man who took an interest in you. Ruth told Naomi she had been working in a field belonging to a man named Boaz. See verse number 20. May the Lord bless Boaz. Naomi exclaimed. The Lord always keeps his promises to the living and the dead. Look at the sentence. This same woman two chapters ago said, The Lord has made my life bitter. Call me Mara. This and that. Enmity with the Lord. Disappointment in the Lord. Now see. The Lord always keeps his promise. So do you know the example you said can change others in your home also? Do you know conversely that people in your home don't change sometimes because of your example is bad? Do you know people in your friend circle don't change? Because in your friend circle you act like a secular person. And in the prayer group you act like a person of faith. So where is, where is the impression flowing on them from Christ? No? They say she's or oh, he's just like us, man. Show always that you're different. You're like them, but you're different in certain things. Then Ruth said, best of all, he told me to keep picking up corn with his workers until they finish the house. So she tells everything. 